Now dig where I'm coming from. I'm coming from two gold medals. I'm coming from nine world records in both the two and four man events. I'm coming from 10 years of intense competition with the best athletes in the world. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Hello and welcome to what I think will be our probably our final episode of this year. Yes, yeah, final for this season. Yeah. I found I found that we did record the recap last year. But oh sure. It was so boring because we already knew it all. And it was gonna come out a week after the buzz ended. Yeah. And I just decided, you know what? We'll just save this as a lost recording. Um, it was not our best work, I'm gonna be honest. Well, you know what? We learned a lot. We sure did. We sure did. Uh so um I've suffered the tortures of the damned, sir. Tortures of the damned. Yes, that's what happened listening to that episode. Um, so anyway, uh, the Oscars are here this uh, this evening in a few hours. Uh, and we're very yeah. excited. We only have a few picks at, um, left. I believe it starts at 6 p.m. or at least Central Time this year. Six, yes. It starts very yeah. late here in Central Time compared to the four in, in L.A. Um, it's yeah. an afternoon thing in L.A. Then you go out after and here is yeah. a late thing. Um, but, uh, but we'll still have fun. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to go to a, a, a happy hour before where it, it's not only a happy hour, but it has, um, a children's playground there. Oh, wow. So okay. I'm going to go get ready and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to watch the dresses for an hour or so. Sounds fun. Sounds fun. Just see what's going on with the dresses. And you're going to, you're going to a bar. You're going to go watch with the people. Yeah. Yeah. Good gathering of, uh, you know, homies and such, you know. Hey, try not to suck any dick on the way through the parking lot. Uh, Unless I want to. That's from the movie Clerks. Uh Aha. Yes. um, Very fun. I wanted to make sure I got that in this episode and that helped me. Uh, Well, would you you be uh, interested? I'm having a problem with my computer right now, but would you be interested in doing some news? Oh, you want me to do the news? No, I'm going to do the news, but... Oh, that's right. But, I love the news. But you I say like you're interested, and then... News yeah. team, assemble! Here's a little Oscar news. Alexander Payne's The Holdovers has been accused of plagiarism by the writers of Luca. Uh, Simon Stevenson sent an email to the Writers Guild of America... Uh, of uh, asking him to have a call to discuss the matter. A uh, CAA rep writer whose credits include Pixar's Luca, Studio Canal's Paddington 2 wrote, I've encountered a credits related issue on a high profile WGA covered project, and it is the holdovers. Uh, and it says it has a plagiarized line. A line. Uh, it's been plagiarized line by line. It's brazen. They're calling it brazen plagiarism. We'll see. Uh-huh. Wow. Maybe Very ooh, interesting. So that controversy, I mean, I don't know how, how the voting schedule went it related to the story broke, but you know, that could have been chance that winning that original screenplay Oscar. You kind of cut out there. What was that? Oh, sorry. I was just saying, Um, I don't know the timeline on the, the story breaking versus the voting, but that could affect its chances at winning original screenplay if people think that um, maybe it wasn't original. Yeah, well, there's no way that they can. Um, well, first of all, they've known since January about this. Mm, okay. Um, so either Variety held the story for an apt time to embarrass them on Oscar Day, <laughs> or or uh, or it's just you know that I mean it probably takes a lot of work to confirm this stuff too. Sure. Though I would guess you could simply read both screenplays. 
you know, when you make a screenplay in your screenwriting software, it tells you when the file date is created. And then whenever you send an email, there's a record of that. So I don't know. There's a lot of ideas that just float around, you know, and you grab it and. But like, yeah, but if they're saying it's line by line plagiarism, then that's a little different. You know? Well, like, do you remember my dodgeball screenplay that we read in college where it literally like there were so many lines from that and that ended up in that dodgeball movie? Because just by proxy of writing a movie about this, you kind of come to some of the same jokes and same stuff, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. though I this this. That would be really um that would be a brazen plagiarism though for this kind of movie because it was so um the characters were so good, everything was so rich, everything was so awesome, you know. So like and it wasn't and and it really wasn't uh a conventional movie, you know, and and, and so like you to have plagiarize something so original and like already going through the uphill battle of having to be made in a time where it's like hard to get these movies made, you know, you just have to be a real, you'd have to be a real dick. I'm nervous yeah. for them. Um, well, yeah. anyway, so we'll see. Uh, here's another piece of news here from Variety. Uh, Illumination and Nintendo are going to make a Super Mario Brothers movie. Wait, they're going to make another one. Like a sequel? Uh, it is unclear at this time. They are not it, using the word sequel. Or is it like they're going to try to make another live action one because the this one was so big? I'm guessing they're going to kick out Chris Pratt and yeah. go another direction. That's what I'm guessing they're going to do. They are going to... Which, not that Mario was bad by any means. Did you see it? No, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't great. It was, I can't you know, that movie made so much money. God. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we were really desperate for something, and also like, I don't know, the the to fan service has to be done with a with a scalpel, and for me to enjoy it. Otherwise, I just groan, and I found myself groaning quite a lot in that movie. Um, so, you know, like, and at the end of the day, it was like, kind of, the worst flaw of the whole movie is just that it was kind of boring. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, so. That's how I felt uh, about Indiana Jones this year, but yeah. 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 Um, so anyway, well, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'll probably still go see it anyway, because I'm a, a fan of the games. Um, the casting awards happened. Uh, Barbie, Barbie won. Yeah, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon won. I think that's no doubt. Um, they have different categories. We can go. Yeah, what are the categories? categories in that I don't even know how that goes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the winner uh, in big budget drama, Killers of the Flower Moon, which of course, that like, how could it not? Um. Sure. Uh, feature studio or independent comedy holdovers. Uh, feature studio independent past lives. Um, the Zeitgeist Award. I assume that's just some special award they have. That's what Barbie won. Okay. And then Chris Chris Feihoffer from Oklahoma won. He won for Reservation Dogs. He was Sweet. among them. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, there were some fun ones. Um, yeah. And so, now I don't know what that really tells us. I don't know if that tells us anything for our Oscar ballots. Yeah. Is this the first time they've had casting awards? Uh, no. Oh, okay. No. No. It's just, but it's gonna. But what are these gonna? Are these gonna be Oscar thing? Well, there will only be one award at the Oscars, but. I would assume I would assume once that award is present, then we will begin it to use the casting awards to be like, okay, well, this now tells us that, you know, like if there was a casting award today, I'd say no question, Killers of the Flower Moon. Just the sheer amount of extras and the sheer amount of types and yeah. Um well, let's chat some box office here. Sure. Money cannot buy the honor which you have earned tonight. 
Kung Fu Panda coming in hot, number one fifty eight million dollars. Knocked off uh, Dune. It did. Oh, it did oh, knock off Dune, but Dune had a serviceable. Even though it had a forty four percent drop, it did make forty six million. It's made one hundred and fifty seven million uh, in domestics. Uh, and I saw Dune, and it was awesome. Nice. It was. It kicked ass. Um, I'm like a hundred percent in for Dune. I don't know why. I don't know why Dune has caught my attention so much, but uh, I saw the first one and I was like, "This is dang good." And the second one, I was like, mm, "I'm in. I'm in for number three. I think it's got some Lord of the Rings three Oscar potential. Definitely after seeing this one, um, it was going to have to be pretty special, you know, as Lord of the Rings three was, you know, and because it is, you know, like it literally picks up right where the last. It literally. They, you can edit them together and it'll be a long movie. Yeah. Um, uh, third is Imaginary, Lionsgate, Cabrini, and number four, Bob Marley, still hanging on, and number five has made 89, uh, 89 million total gross. Um, Ordinary Angels, Madam Web, Migration, YOLO, and coming in at number 10, Wonka, still barely making no. it. Oh, good lord. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, we got to get to it today. You know, we got we got to get ready for our Oscar things. But do you have any birthdays before we move on? Yeah, we got a few people celebrating birthdays today. Wilson! Wilson! <laughs> March 10th, Oscar Day. Let's see. Wilson! Hey. Wilson! 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 Oh, Wilson will be fine, Tom. Um, okay, yeah, today, March 10th, uh, we have Oscar winner Paul Haggett. Uh, mm -hmm. I know his film, Crash, won Best Picture in 2005. I think he won Best Original Screenplay as well. Anyway, he's 71 today, Mr. Paul Haggis. Um, yeah, Oscar. Uh, uh, he was in that Scientology biopic too. Who's right, who was right? What was that called? Going, oh, I can't I remember. Clear? Yeah, I mean, he's like that. Yeah, one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of those guys, Scientology guys. Um, Scott Frank, the Oscar nominated screenwriter of Out of Sight and Get Shorty and Logan, is 64 today. Scott Frank, uh, okay, now when you walk into the ring, <laughs> uh, Thomas Middleditch. From Silicon Valley and the Wolf of Wall Street is 42 today. Miss Jasmine Guy from a different world is 62. Uh, remember her from when I was younger. Cool. Chuck Norris, Walker, Texas Ranger himself, is 84 years old today. Uh, the legendary. Here's a nice piece of shit. Hey, man. It's your Texas guy. It's your Texas guy. He did, you know what? Walker, Texas Ranger did do so much for our economy, actually. Okay. You're true. That's um, true. He's all right, I guess. Yeah, he sucks. Um, and then uh, let's see, uh, our the legendary Miss Sharon Stone is 66 today. Happy birthday, Sharon. That's the kind of thing we are going to be interested in from now on. Good old Johnny Ham from Mad Men is 53. John Ham is so handsome. Uh, Olivia Wilde, actress, director. 40 years old today. Welcome to your 40s, Olivia. And finally. Mr. Bond, I need a urine sample. If you could fill this beaker for me. From here? Oh, Lord. And finally, Mr. Danny Puddy from Community is 45 years old today. Happy birthday, famous Wow! <laughs> wow! All I can say is wow! Uh, great segment, as usual. Hey, I do my best. Um, well, uh, I guess without further ado, we should probably, uh... May I have the envelope, please? We're gonna finish them today, huh? Slumdog Big Millionaire. Guess. An American in Paris. Platoon. Birdman. Chariots of Fire. Driving Miss Daisy, Forrest Gump, from here. All right.
Okay. Um, well, I want to tell you, I I went above and beyond. Did you see? Have you seen all ten Best Picture nominees? I have now seen all ten Best Picture nominees. Yes. Okay. So starting uh, with actor, uh, this week I watched American Fiction. I watched it last night. Um, yes, it was everything about it was wonderful. You know, uh, my thoughts on it were. None of this would make this an exceptional movie except for the fact that everything about it is exceptional. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it was kind of this, like, basic teetered on rom-com, teetered yeah. on kind of, kind of, uh, you know, a, a sleeper summer rom-com hit. But also, everything is so good. All the acting was just so good. I, I thought the yeah. acting, the acting across the board it's one of my favorite jeffrey wright performances like just the grumpy like writer guy like super fun yeah it was just yeah. awesome I, I really didn't have any complaints um i thought i thought it was very very good and so heartfelt i don't i do think it was kind of like two different movies and couldn't i don't know if it fully gelled them together but i still thought it was very well done ultimately yeah it it was the i mean i i the screenplay have, have really good scenes you know yes. he had really yeah. good scenes but it's yes so many good it, lines so funny yeah, yeah. it and, you know and a great ending super fun ending and uh yeah I, I gotta say the adam brody character didn't fully work for me like especially those two scenes are kind of like oh the last moment though <laughs> the, i don't want to spoil it but the yeah but, neither yeah but you know, again, even the ending, like I loved the ending, but it felt like a tonal m m change yeah. in what we had seen the whole movie. You know, it, it really, you're, you're right in that it couldn't, it didn't really know what it was at times, but yeah. it was still really good though. I really yeah. enjoyed it. I'm really happy at all of that and those nominations happened. Um, but it, but that closes out actor for me. We've already, we've already agreed with Killian Murphy. I have no reason to change that. Locked in. Uh, a sporting role. I've also closed that category out now that I see Sterling K. Brown. Great, great performance. Great. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. But it was, uh, I will say, I mean, I might ding it or run into a bit of it because, you know, they like to nominate a really masculine male actor whenever he plays somebody gay. And it's like, okay, yeah, I know that. But it's still a good performance. Like, yeah, he's, yeah. he, um, I think he did it justice because there was so much other stuff going on. You, yeah. you know, he wasn't just gay. I mean, he had a drug problem. He had he had a right. lot of things yes. about yeah. him. He was that, still very specific. Yeah. 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 Um. So yeah, it was good. It was real. I just think he's 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 a big star. Um. I uh. I gotta tell you, I'm still sad about not about backing out of Mark Ruffalo, but I'm going to just because just because I don't I don't see it. I'm sad that I didn't get to see poor things. Uh, yeah. And I won't get you before. That was the only one I told you to see. It's on Disney Plus now. It is? Oh, yeah. Shit. I got to watch, watch it then. Yeah. Right, I, I, yeah. That makes no sense. Maybe I can watch it today. Um, but I also watched Anatomy of a Fall. And okay. so I'm now, we, we got to do it anyway because it's time. But. Oh, yeah. I guess I've only seen two of these. Um, I, you know what? Get, give me Lily Gladstone. Give me Lily Gladstone, baby. Yeah. Oh no, wrong one. Um, I I don't know. No, really, uh, you're, you're not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure between Lily Gladstone and Emma Stone. I feel like, I feel like this, I just don't, I just don't know. 
like Emma Stone was the whole movie of Poor Things. You 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 know, um, yeah. I don't think Poor Things is going to get a lot of love to, at the Oscars, and it really should. Um, but then then again, you know what? We've got to be. I'm going to go with Emma Stone. I don't. I'm not sure either. I'm not sure either. Because I know Lily Gladstone yeah. won the SAG. I know she won the SAG, but Emma Stone had one other stuff too, right? I don't a know. A lot of um, other stuff. A lot of yeah, other stuff. Um, yeah. Well, and, uh, and Gladstone also won the Golden Globe too, as well, you know, to be fair. Yeah. Tough call. Yeah. No, no, I'm not. I'm going to be on the right side of history. I'm going to go with Lily Gladstone then. It's settled. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I just think they've got to do it because especially because they're not going to give Barbie any awards. They got to have something and they got to do this. This is what they got to do. And Emma Stone, I mean, it might be a deserving performance, but she did win just a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tough, tough call there. Um, I didn't see the color purple, but we've, we've settled. I'm going with Devin Joy Randolph. You're going with America Ferreira. Yeah, we settled that one. Uh, I I'm just gonna go with the boy and the heron. I did, couldn't find it. It's not streaming anywhere, but um, I I think he came out of retirement for it. You know, I think it's I think it's also kind of a weak animated year. Yeah, like I didn't think Nimona was particularly great, and I didn't think Elemental was like the best thing I've ever seen either. You know, um, so I'm gonna make that call. Um. Now here we go. Here's where we get now. Here's where we get into the business with cinematography. Um, we have to do it though. Um, um, May I have the envelope, please? I don't know. I feel in the mood. Big, it's gonna be such a big Oppenheimer night. I just yeah. I'm trying to decide how big. You know what? I think I feel like being a little weird with this one, so why not? You know, um, I'm gonna vote for Maestro for cinematography. Really? Do I think it'll win? Probably not. You know, hmm. I mean, they gave it to like what All Quiet on the Western Front last year or something randomly. In Maestro, if nothing else worked about it, it was visually like such a well shot movie. And lots of other things did work about it. So, I'm going to be a little bitch. I'm going to go with Oppenheimer. All right, let's move on. All right. I'm going to do it because you know what? It's just that it's just, it's Barbenheimer was such a turning point for movies and they're not going to give Barbie the Oscars. So by proxy of that, it is going to be, there's going to be a couple surprises, but I think Oppenheimer is just going to clean house. You might, you're probably right. Yeah. Costume design though. I'm sticking with Killers of the Flower Moon. Did you make it? You've got to make a choice still. I do have to make a choice. May I have the envelope? I will also pick Killers of the Flower Moon for us more support towards that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Um, directing. So I did close out Anatomy of a Fall. Uh, we've already made our our intro our yeah. picture anyway, but I closed out that one. I'm very proud of myself. Um documentary feature i already voted i'm telling man i'm scared that it will be bobby bobby wine though but i don't know yeah but for the 20 days miracle um i will go let's go 20 days of miracle sure yes yes this is gonna be a big ballot year can already tell 
documentary short film. I didn't even read these premises. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I'll see if I can get the premises here on this website here. Sure. Here, we'll look at the, uh, the predictions. I got Elephant Whisperers last time, but the thing is, I was able to watch that because they put it on streaming. I just don't understand why they don't put them out all on streaming and make them easy for us to watch. Do you understand? I don't understand anything. Yeah, I can't find any premises. Oh, well, okay, let's see. I got so. Uh, the ABCs of book banning is about uh, people banning books in Florida recently. Uh, and, you know. Oh, fun. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Not going to yeah. win. Okay. Um, the Barber of Little Rock. Barber. Barbara of Little Rock is uh, it's a community bank. Man giving back to his community. It's a fight to close the racial gap. So he starts his own community bank. It's cute. Okay. Next. <laughs> Island in between. It's the story of the islands of Kinmen and the relationship between Taiwan, China, and the United States. And ooh, ooh, that's 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 filling in the wheelhouse there. All right, possibly. Oh, this one was on. Uh, whoa, whoa. Let's repair shop. Uh, I want to ask you a bunch of questions. And I want to have them answered immediately. <laughs> ah, here we go. The last repair shop. Uh, oh, it's it's in 1959. Los Angeles has been one of the few cities to offer and fix musical instruments for public schools at no cost. Wow. Oh, that's, that's kind of interesting. So we fix, uh, we fix things. Okay, I don't know. And Nene and Wapo. It's about uh, a a Chinese immigrant, and it's about a, a Chinese director making a, a documentary about his grandparents, his grandmothers, basically his two different grandmothers. One's ninety four, and one is eighty three. I'm gonna go with the island in between. I'm going to go with Nai Nai and Wipe. That the American one. I guess that's true. But it's mm. about Chinese immigrants. Mm. Let's see. Let's see what the odds are. Uh, let's see. Let's see the betting odds here. I don't know how to read the betting odds. Oh, it looks like ABC's of book banning has a lot of uh, a lot of buzz. In fact, the one I have is the released one. I'm going to change my vote. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, nope. I'm going to take the L on that. All right. But the ABC's of book banning. So who did you pick? Uh, you Nine Nine and Wipo. Yeah, okay. Uh, judging by the odds, I think we're both going to lose this one. Oh, but well, that's okay. But if I had seen it, I would have known. Film editing, we're solid. We're going with zone of interest. Um, makeup and hair stylings. Now, this one's tough. This one's tough. But we got to do it. We got to do it. Um. May I have the envelope, please? Woo! We do have to do it. Um, I haven't. I've only seen two of these, uh, three of these. No, two.
to him. Um, I'm going to go with poor things. Me too. Poor things. Yes. Yeah. Just. I don't. I don't know. It's got to win something for all the, yeah, some the, of the production some design. Of the, yeah, some of the imagery I've seen too. It's just like yeah, the makeup yeah. and hair sounding really is interesting. Um. Bow, yeah. So we picked our musicals. We're going with Oppenheimer. Yeah, and I uh, I think that's going to happen. Now I picked American Symphony, but I want you to know that I the answer is what was I made for is going to win. I want to go on record of this, but I picked American Sym- Symphony in t- t- spite you. For your choice of I'm just Ken. So I want if you're do not do not follow suit with me unless you want to you want to stick it to Kanemu because you're not gonna win. Uh Oppenheimer Best Picture. Yeah, that's happening. Production design, you gotta make a pick. I do. Um, I went with poor things. May I poor things. I think I will also go with poor things. I think this is where uh, they'll show the show the love. It's down here. Yeah. Yeah, all of these wise. technical elements, yes. Um all right. Animated short film. Uh Letters to a Pig, 95 Senses. Jared Hess. Is that uh that's it's a Napoleon, Napoleon Dynamite. Dynamite? Yeah. Uh our uniform pachyderm. And the war is over. Um, oof. Oof. No idea. Oof. Well, we didn't see any of them, but you know, you got John and Yoko. I think I'm going to go with John and Yoko. It's timely. Is it actually about John and in- Yoko? No, it's just inspired by the music, but just the fact that they're in the title, I just think that makes him in the war theme. Sure. It's going to go to the famous era of the two, and I just feel this is how it's going to go. Uh, I made my check, so let me... Let me uh, Let me check on the odds for animated short. I'm sorry I laughed at you that time you got diarrhea at Barnes and Noble. And I'm sorry I told everyone about it. And I'm sorry for repeating it now. You know, it could be like this. Just like this, always. <laughs> You've got a real attitude problem, McFly. You're a slacker. Um, I'm going to pick 95 senses. 95 senses. Did well, the, a quick the, superficial the, scan. The odds say that it is uh war is over, so I'm gonna win that one just okay, by guessing. One. Um now live action short film. So I, I I didn't see it, but I am going to go with Wes Anderson, and this is why this is good for the short film. This is good for this medium. This is a big win for the medium to have so many stars and a big director and a big streaming release this is going to be a good you know because they're they're proving that there are people who will just tune in for a 30 minute short film you know uh so i think i think they're going to reward wes anderson for doing this and uh you know it's real doll is it a real doll yeah so yeah that's just going to be awesome i haven't did you watch it i didn't watch it. it but 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 I haven't seen any of these, so I'm straight up guessing. But that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go with that. I, I'm gonna go with that too, just because yeah, it has the famous people. It's Wes Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. And this way, this way, they can say, "Oh yeah, we gave Wes Anderson an Oscar." Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is happening. Sound, we sound. You went with Oppenheimer. I went with Zone of Interest. I assume you're the favorite. Um, yeah. 
you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go with Godzilla. No, I'm. I'm gonna go with Godzilla minus one two. I've decided. Right on. It just had a lot of people talking about it. Everyone hates Guardians of the Galaxy VFX. Uh, all those, all those Marvel VFX. Um, the workers, especially, I would hate it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mission, Mission Impossible. Mm, I don't know. Napoleon and Napoleon the Creator. That's why you got nominated, but you're not going to win. I think Godzilla minus one sounds like fun this year. Yeah. Uh, you need to make a choice on screenplay. I do. I do. May I have the envelope, please? I didn't see four things, but fuck it. Barbie! Go Greta, Greta and Noah. Uh, I won't be mad at that. It's my it's my fifth favorite screenplay on here, but I won't be mad at that. Okay, that's fair. Uh, but oh, it's my I probably like the Barbie screenplay better than the American fiction screenplay, but it's my fourth favorite screenplay for sure. But I wouldn't be mad because. It's probably going to happen, and I love Greta Gerwig. I and I know Bumbeck as people. They're I love their their individual works. So I'm not going to be sad at that. I'm sticking with Oppenheimer, though. I think it's going to be just a massive Oppenheimer night. And last original screenplay. Here we go. The Plagiarist. Okay. May I have the envelope, please? Uh, I saw oh. Anatomy of a Fall. Okay, I saw past, I saw Past Lives. The only oh you did okay yeah. Um, up on there. I gotta tell you that that plagiarism thing. Yeah, I think that's gonna work against it. But it is the best screenplay. I'm gonna pick the holdovers. Loved it. I'm gonna go past lives. Green song. You like that screenplay better than the holdovers? Personally, yeah. Did you find that movie to be a little slow? Just a tiny bit. I mean, like deliberately so, though. Yeah, it was very slow. I didn't think it was accidentally. So I think, yeah, I, I think it was like supposed to be slow. I, thought, I think it was going. Exactly that's probably true. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. probably true. Um, and it wasn't like slow, like there's nothing happening. Like there was always something happening. I was in, engaged the entire time. So, yeah. yeah. I just felt the holdovers was never slow. Um, but. I've just we'll seen the holdovers before. It's that I've seen the holdovers before. You've seen the holdovers outside before. of outside of maybe Paul Giamatti's character. I've seen movies set at prep schools. I've seen movies about lonely people coming together in isolation. I've seen movies about grieving mothers and uh, you know disaffected uh, adolescents. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, it could be like this, just like this always. Uh yeah well it was it's very it's very good, good. Yeah. past yeah. life was good I gotta say Anatomy of a Fall was a little fat for my taste mm -hmm. it was a little okay. overwritten I thought I was gonna love it I don't even think she's better in that movie than she is in Zone of Interest okay so uh that that helped make that decision a lot easier for me once we knocked that out um. Past Lives is, is, was good, though. I did really enjoy it. Yeah, And I don't even know if it's going to well win, but I do. I do, yeah. I mean, just, like you say, you say Anatomy of a Fall is a little fat. Holdovers, probably controversial. Maestro, no. Uh, May, December, probably not. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean... Past, Lives, Past Lives has a lot of love and a lot of support. I need to see all that plagiarism, too, but... Oh, it was just a wonderful movie. Um, somebody's got to win from that movie. Uh, okay, well, we did it.
Yeah. Here it is. Another year in the books. See how it turns out tonight. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> we had discussed doing a summer blockbuster one, but we never did. If you're good at something, never do it for free. I don't really actively pursue that many summer blockbusters, honestly. Me neither. I, yeah. Me neither. They just haven't really... It's not what they used to be. No, no, no. It's all PG-13, all for kids and stuff now. And, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I like comic book movies, but that's really about it. I don't be Fast and the Furious and shit, and you know, Fast and the Furious is all right though. It knows what it is at least, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's why I have Mission Impossible for. Friends, step right up, folks. See if you can outdrive the amazing golf ball uh, whacker guy. Friends. Um. Well, I do enjoy these chats, but yes, there's not enough blockbusters to keep it year-round, but we'll be back next year, I'm sure. Certainly, yeah. Yeah, maybe um, even uh, if we can, if there's time, if we work it out, maybe you could do some kind of a fall, like what's likely to be in the running. or Ah, uh, the know. preview yeah. show. We start the yes. buzz. Yeah. Well, um, I... I I also would like us. We should li be live streaming the Oscars, though. That's what, what I want. Yeah, maybe. Oh, well, yeah. We if we work that next year, sure. Oh. Maybe. I'm sorry, babe. I didn't mean that either. I I just yell sometimes because I get so scared, scared of being a nobody. Um. Well. I just think it would be fun if we could, if we could, uh, if they would just put out more movies, bigger movies to get us excited to do podcasting year round or if someone yeah. paid, but if someone, you know, if, if the views go up, cause this is the week where it happens, either we go through the roof and we're viral this week or we have to wait until next year. And that's, and we won't happen until next year. So this is the week where we know whether or not our dreams came true. We're going to take fire. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so um I'll share it on my Facebook. You of course can share it on your Facebook and then will. we'll see what happens from there. Yeah. Um okay, well um on this road. Jesus, it's only the biggest goddamn hole in the world. Um on that note, I'll uh I'll let you go, but it was a great year and enjoy your Oscar party tonight and yeah, uh you too, man. Well, good luck. Best of luck to you and your ballot. Sure thing. Yeah, I'm sure we'll check in on the results. Um, yeah, we will. If it's Lieutenant Dan, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I have to play the song. Hold on. He liked to say the F word a lot. F this and F that. And every time he said the F word, people for some reason, well, they'd cheer. He dies. He dies.